Out of the Ordinary Insights, brought to you by Investec Specialist Bank. Welcome to Captains to Industry. I'm talking today to Johan van Seyl, who is the Chief Executive of Sunlum. Johan, as always with these uh, little interviews and conversations, we'll, we'll start with the company and the sector that you've been involved with, and then we'll move on to a more personal look at what I think has been a very interesting and, and varied career. So let's start at the end, as it were. You're at Sunlum, you're Chief Executive. You've been there for 10 years now. Before that, on one of uh, Suntum's, uh, uh, Sunlum subsidiaries, uh, Suntum, for a couple of years, so what's it been like? You've obviously enjoyed being a chief executive of an insurance company. What have you done at Sunlum? Well, it's been, a, it's been a good ride and it's been a good time. I mean, when you stand on the side, you have a certain expectation what can be achieved and so forth. And I think, by and large, we have not only done that, we've uh, maybe done a little bit better. It's been a tough, tough times. I mean, 10 years ago, insurance companies, particularly life insurance, uh, companies weren't the flavor of the month. We were at the tough times. You would recall the pension fund adjudicator and a whole slew of things going mm. against us. Uh, we were tying up people's money in a very volatile world where you know people wanted to move much quicker and uh, and we've overcome a lot of that, much more efficiency. And uh, you know now we're ag again as a, as not only a Sunlum but as a as an industry, we're much more efficient and we're competitive and good value for money again. Of course, there was the demutualization of Mu Old Mutual and Sunlum, huge exercise, uh, and a lot of legacy there of attitudes and structures and customs from that time. Yes, the demutualization took place in 1998, and you know, and uh, just splitting the business between shareholders and policyholders was a big thing. To see your share price in the newspaper every day, to become much more efficient, to be measured against other companies in terms of capital and things like that. Up till then, capital wasn't treated as a scarce resource. We were very much run like a co cooperative. Of course, coming from an agricultural background, I have a lot of I had a lot of experience in that. And really getting the focus on return on capital and shareholder returns and things like that. So we had to change the culture. And with it goes also structures and, and, and sometimes people also. What about uh, lazy capital? I remember your chairman, Roy Anderson, at the time saying he thought there was lazy capital at uh, Sunlum. Of course, he came from uh, having run the JSC and Liberty Life and so on from a different part of the, of the woods. Uh, how did you work with him and how did you go about sorting out the lazy capital issue? I think Roy really put that high on the agenda. And uh, a big part of the value being created in Sunlum, the one part was growing the business. Uh, the other part was really applying the lazy capital and, 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 and doing well with that. What did he mean? You know, just capital that's not being optimally used. And uh, we had a big capital base at that time. We had a big investment in APSA uh, that didn't bring us any business. Really, you know, reapplying it. So we, we, we sold APSA to uh, our stake in APSA, to Barclays, and then using that capital to buy back our shares uh, that were substantially undervalued. And, and secondly, investing into businesses, both in the high end of the market, but also particularly low end, the old African life, Channel life, African, and moving into Africa and elsewhere. What about the sector that you're in now? Um, and things have changed a great deal. It used to be a comfortable old world. Uh, in pension, the pension world, for example, defined benefit, everyone could take for granted yes. what was happening. Defined contribution has become the way, but also the world has changed. So you've got aging populations, you've got people not being looked after for as long into their old age, living longer, maybe having to work longer. You as the chief executive have had to think about a lot of these things. Yes, a lot of it uh, we had to think about. And I think the first thing that we've embraced really within the business is that you can't only be in life insurance. I mean. So diversification was a big part of what we, uh, the, what we did and what we embraced. Uh, you know, both in terms of a product base, but also in who to service. We, we had to bring in the, the black majority, the new democratic majority in South Africa that uh, was a, an engine for growth really, not only to us, but in retail and many other sectors of the economy, uh, to, how to embrace that and do things, we had to look at direct, uh, not only intermediated access and distribution, but also direct access and things like that. And then geographically, you know, also branching outside of into, uh, you know, the African story. You've also made the point that uh, regulation is very important, but the authorities are quite imaginative and quite energetic in bringing new regulations, new reforms. And you've made the point that don't rush too much and don't uh, overburden the sector with uh, lots of changes. 
Yes, a lot of the regulation that we've been, uh, you know, uh, being subjected to is, assa uh, is essentially being copied from the, the developed world. And we're still uh, in emerging markets. If I could quote you there saying that uh, one of the problems is that you've got a, a medicines being prescribed for a, 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 a sickness that isn't necessarily here in yeah. South Africa. Yes, uh, we're part of the world economy, you have to take that. And, you know, particularly following the credit crunch, uh, financial institutions didn't cover themselves in, in, in much glory. So worldwide there was a tightening up of controls and, you know, increased capital and things like that. And exactly those same rules are applied here, although nobody fell over in South Africa. Mm. And uh, granted, we, did, we do have some problems that we have to address. But the severity that we've seen elsewhere, cer certainly not here, but the medicine that we're being forced to, to take is, is very similar. How about uh, the Treasury and the Financial Services Board and that? Do you interact? Well, obviously you must interact with them, but do you see a sensible uh, way forward coming out of this? Yes, I, I must say I have, I've, I've not seen, uh, you know, people doing things deliberately harming the economy and things like that. It's all well intended. Uh, the, the, the trick is to find that middle way. A business like ours uh, have a long-term horizon. I mean, we often take and invest people's money on a 20, 30 year horizon. And so it's very difficult to adapt in the short term if things change. So we're not against the changes. Many of them are, are pretty good. It makes us more competitive and viable. And it, in the end, it, it creates good business practice like treating clients fairly or customers fairly. And, uh, you know, also better value for money to people, which is simply good for us. But it's always the time frame in which you, you do it. And there are more than one policy, there is more than one policy goal. I mean, often it's employment vis-a-vis, -vis, you know, looking after the client and so forth. And these things don't work together necessarily. Mm. Looking at uh, the, the broader economy that we're in, we need chief executives, leaders of big companies to speak. Where do you see us going? Because there's a view that uh, the economy is uh, stagnating, that there's a policy paralysis, that decisions that should be made, an admirable NDP, National Development Plan, but not being implemented, uh, and the, the, the risk of stagnation in the economy in sense of no growth, but also inflation, and most of all, no job creation, which is not good for anyone. Yes, I think we, we're trying a lot. We have a lot on our plate. And the real issue is that I think that we should rather focus on one or two of the major priorities instead of trying to do and fix everything simultaneously. What would you focus on? Well, I think the biggest problem at this moment in time is certainly job creation. But that means surely breaking, changing the way things are done. Because if you keep exactly. saying we want to create jobs, but you don't change anything in the way you do things, exactly. it's not going to happen. No, exactly. And uh, we, we're trying to be uh, everything to everybody. And this is a big problem. You can't appease labor by doing a whole lot and securing only the jobs of those who have employment at the present without looking at the millions who don't have jobs. So you have to have a balance in the approach. And we don't have that. We're trying, you know, uh, to keep the past in a way that's been put in place, but create a future on top of that. And you have to break with it. Do you think there's a leadership problem in the country? Yeah, I think part of it is a leadership, the commitment towards uh, those objectives and to get everybody to drive in the same direction. You know, taking a business like Sunlam, it's very difficult to get different businesses to do different things. I mean, we had to break from the past. We had to embrace a new future and a new culture, which is very different. It's competitive rather than being complacent and, you know, a family type of an approach and so and the only way to do that is to really get everybody to focus on exactly that. So it's a, it's a, it's a big issue, and, and I think it starts from the top. Do you think business is doing enough? And I know it's difficult because people expect business to speak as one voice, but as you point out, it's a lot of different companies. You can't expect them all to speak with the same voice. Is business collectively and individually doing enough to make its voice felt? Uh, and Or is it, uh, as I like to say with some of the chief executives, when, when the flak happens, they want to keep their head down? Uh, I don't think personally that business is doing enough. A lot is being done at different areas and so forth, but we can do much more. And, uh, you know, we, we're not necessarily raising our voice here. Uh, the response, uh, of course, to a lot of it is a decision to diversify a gang outside of the country rather than to invest here and, and things like that. 
which isn't good for the country over the long time. I think a lot of what what is taking place in Africa should have occurred here, the growth, the job creation, mm. and so forth. Actually, what, and uh, that's actually worth uh, bringing to, back to Sunlum, your growth story in Africa. And a lot of companies in South Africa in different sectors, the growth now is happening in the rest of the continent, not in South Africa, that's but for Sunlum too. Yes, that's correct. We, we operate in most of the uh, Anglophone countries, the English-speaking countries, for two reasons. We can work from here, we understand the language, and the regulatory system is the old British system, which is very similar to our, to our own. So it's fairly easy to service those businesses from here, to understand what's going on, and, and to give direction, although we have partners in most of the country. What have you learned doing that? We've learned a lot. I mean, we've learned that Africa is, has a tremendous potential. I mean, when we went into Africa the first time, we had relatively low expectations. And I must say, those have been exceeded tremendously. It's a vast continent, and it's going to be tremendous, and, and we'll see tremendous growth into the Haven't you also found that there's no such thing as Africa, but there are lots of different countries in Africa which have their own issues? That is, of course, true. You know, what we refer to Africa, billion consumers, and, 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 and that is really a conglomerate of smaller, very protective sort of countries, each with a regulator, each with their own set of rules and so forth. And you can't really think that you can uh, have one approach to the whole of Africa. West Africa, very different from Eastern Africa or Southern Africa, for that matter. What's on your mind most at the moment now uh, in terms of Sunlum? And, uh, what do you wake up in the morning thinking most about in terms of the challenges for growth and uh, growing earnings? Well, one of the biggest issues that we face, of course, regulation. And it's not, we think it's a South African issue. It's a worldwide issue. We see it everywhere. And uh, it comes from people who don't have tremendous, uh, I think, experience in doing business. So they expect uh, quick changes and so forth. So that's, that's one issue that we, that we really embrace. I think the second thing is really how do you add value to what the client, in the end the client has to choose between a very, very diverse range of products and, and solutions, whatever you do. And you have to have that one thing that will grab them, grab their attention and, and, and do that. And those things vary by country and that's what occupies our time, you know, uh, both in terms of opportunities where to invest but also in terms of product efficiency and what you need to do. Ten years you've been in the job? How much longer? How much longer would you want to? Still enjoying it. I still have a, a formal uh, two and a half years of a commitment of two and a half years, and then we'll see where it goes.